Hey guys, it's Rachel from The Little Ring Lamb and it feels so surreal kind of to be back here and filming because I honestly haven't done a sit down video in this location or really at all since last August, like in an informal setting using my camera. So it's super weird. I even contemplated sometimes just doing live videos, just like, oh, it'd just be so much easier. But I took kind of the month of May pretty much off because I was like, I kind of need a rest. The school year's been pretty intense and I want to refocus. And if I'm coming back to YouTube, I want to... I don't know, just improve. Like, I feel like sometimes I just coast along, but I'm not putting too much pressure on myself because this is a hobby at the end of the day, and I need to put more pressure on more important things that make sense, like my career and my relationships in my life and stuff like that. But so much has happened this year, especially when it came to my reading, but actually today I'm going to be going over my 2018 favorites. This is one of my favorite videos to put out for my favorite books of 2018, and I'd yet to do it because I was gonna do it on winter break but I went through some stuff and I was like you know I just don't feel mentally sound to do any videos so I decided I at least want to put it up even though it's literally been going up like close to halfway through the year of 2019 but anyway I'm gonna get into my favorites I have 13 or 12 uh 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 yes 13 and I know I'm supposed to do 10 but I was like you know what I'm just gonna do this all and I don't have any conflicted award actually this year because usually I have a conflicted award where it's like yeah I'm not gonna get into that because I don't have one this year but anyway so I kind of want to leave my favorite book of 20, 2018 to the end I do have an absolute favorite so that's gonna have to well these are all my favorites but this one just blew me out of the way and it blew me away <laughs> that's the right phrase so yeah I'm gonna get into it so this is in no particular order so one of my favorites of 2018 was Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. I actually read the whole trilogy this year and I just have a very good memories about reading it. I was just a very peaceful time in my life. I was in a really big milk dud addiction. And I just remember eating milk duds and reading this book and I just absolutely adored this book. I love Kevin Kwan's writing. I love the characters. This wasn't, I mean this is my second favorite in the series, but yeah, I really enjoyed this book, and I still have yet to watch the film. I do have it on DVD. I'm meaning to watch it this summer. Um, I've watched a few movies this summer, but, like, I'm trying to get for my movies, and then I have TV shows I want to watch. Like, I've just been very conflicted with what I want to watch it all over the place. But, yes, really enjoyed this book. I do have a book review of this book, and I believe the other two books in the series, so you should definitely check those out if you want more details about that book. If I do have reviews on them, I'm not going to be as get into as many details unless I feel the need. So the next book is A Night In with Grace Kelly by Lucy Holiday, the third book in the A Night In with series. This book took me so long to read because they pushed the date back when it was being released and I guess that internally frustrated me. But I finally read it and the second book like pulled at my heartstrings. It was like, it was just making me like stressed out because there's a certain plot with her and somebody else and it was just stressing me out and I was like, I need to get this all resolved. Like, this needs to happen, and I found this book to be very satisfying. I like the way the trilogy ended. Um, I believe I do a review up of this one as well. I can't quite remember because near the end of the summer, I kind of got lazy in my reviews and didn't put up as many, um, which is quite unfortunate, but I was getting ready to go to school, and I was like, you know, I'll just film them all at school, and then I'm like, here I am, and I'm like, I can't film a review when I read the book a year earlier. Yes, I could probably film and do an okay job, but I'd rather not just because I feel like it'd be a waste of my time because I wouldn't be as, like, I feel like sometimes when I come to do reviews, I'm not as articulate as I'd like to be, and especially because it's been a year. The next book is White Oleander. I forget how to pronounce that word properly. I might be pronouncing it properly. I know how to pronounce it properly, but I've forgotten it. Um, and this is by Janet Fitch. And this is when I actually saw BookTube, and this one was really good. It falls, uh, well, I have a review of this one I know of um, on my channel, but... I just really loved how it felt this girl and you got to see the evolution of how her surroundings changed her and her environment and it was just a very interesting book it was sad in parts happy in parts and you're just really rooting for the main character and i loved the journey it took me on um it was one where i was really enthralled so i really enjoyed that also if you see me reaching up i have my little storage ottoman from school sitting right here because there's no proper place to put it um, then I read The Favorite Sister by Jessica Knoll, and this book, like, I really wanted to read The Luckiest Girl Alive, but then I ended up getting this book because it dealt with a reality TV show, and if you know me, I really do love reality TV shows. I'm not really cooking and gardening and homes, like, 
I watch some home stuff with my mom, but like on my own, I watch like a lot of the Bravo shows and stuff like that. So like, I really love that behind the scenes reality feel. Um, I've watched a little bit of Unreal. Like it's kind of like it gives me those vibes, like the Unreal show, um, but it actually has to do with the people involved off camera and not necessarily the producers, but the producers do come into play and the people behind the scenes. Very minimal though, because you're focusing on the people. And this was just a thriller and a mystery, but it wasn't too, it was more mysterious than a thriller or more of a mystery than a thriller. It didn't keep me on the edge of my seat for that reason, but I was interested because I wanted to see the evolution of the show, what was going to happen and everything. Like I really wish there was a sequel to this or more books dealing with reality TV behind the scenes because I find it fascinating just for the same reasons I find reality TV fascinating because it's interesting taking a peek into somebody else's life sometimes. So the next book is The Perfect Couple by Ellen Hildebrand, which was her summer release last year. I absolutely adored this. I do have a review of, of this book, um, but I just found it to be such a good book. It was a good mystery. I forget the book that came out the year before. I think it was maybe The Favorite Sister, and I wasn't a big fan of that if it was. And I was just so excited for this one. Her new one coming out this summer sounds so good. I pre-ordered it. Side note. But this one's really good. I even, my mom reads some of my books. Um, she doesn't read as much as me, but like sometimes I'll just pass her on one. She likes mysteries and she really liked this one. And it all has centered around this like wedding and, oh no, The Identicals. It's not The Favorite Sister. The Favorite Sister was that book. <laughs> God. The Identicals, that was the one that I wasn't a big fan of last summer. So I was kind of like had some trepidation going into this one. And it's just a really good book. I love Ellen Hildebrand's books. I was like, girl, why did I ever doubt you? Not that I really doubted Ellen Hildebrand because I knew like it was just like a fluke that I didn't like that book, but I was like, should never have doubted my love for Ellen Hildebrand's books. <laughs> it sounded really weird there. The next book is actually a memoir and it's This Will Only Hurt a Little by Busy Phillips. So I picked this one up initially because, well, first of all, I follow Busy Phillips on Instagram and also she was on Dawson's Creek, which is one of my favorite shows. And I just really like, like, when I read, read interviews that she's done and stuff like that, like, I don't know. I just was really interested in this book because of all those factors. And I read it and I really, really enjoyed it. I did not get, I didn't get to really see her talk show because I don't have a TV in my room and the only other TV is in my sister's room, which is half of our TV room. So she's in there at nights, like, I can't go in and watch stuff. So I watched, like, the clips on YouTube and I absolutely loved her show. It sucks I got canceled really sad about that but her memoir was really good I don't do reviews on memoirs and I did read this in December so that's why there's a lack of reviewer mention on my channel that I read it besides the book haul which I believe I said I was reading it during that book haul or the time the I was next book it. is Hedda Gabler Gabler I always pronounce it wrong and I literally watch so many things to pronounce it correctly but it's by Enrique Ibsen and this is my second play I've read by him I've read The Doll's House which was my favorite play ever um I haven't read, too, well I've read quite a few plays because I did take a theater and film class, but like the majority of the plays I've read were by Shakespeare prior to that. But I absolutely love his plays and The Doll's House has actually been dethroned. This is my favorite play ever. It was so good. I remember walking down the street reading it, taking it to work to read. I'm not a big fan of this edition because it's like a super large print and it's really like it just looks rough. So I might eventually get a new edition that's pretty. but. I really love this play. I really want to do a review on this, so I think I might reread this this summer because it is a play and it's shorter, and do a proper review because I can't even like articulate the plot. I feel like without spoiling it, so I really need to reread it so I don't spoil the plot. But so good. It's based about this woman, and she's a bit dissatisfied with her life right now and what she goes through, and you kind of see what's happening in her life. And I just found the play was so refreshing and so riveting and I really want to see a production of it. I know there's an old, there's two movies, a newer one and an older one. And then there's so many play adaptations of it and I just want to see some version of it. I think I'm going to go for the Ingrid, last name starts with B, like the 1963 version because I really kind of want to see that. It's on YouTube so I should probably get on that but it's kind of the plan. The next book is You Think It, I'll Say It by Curtis Settenfeld. And these are, this is actually a collection of short stories, which is interesting this made on my list, which really speaks to it because I really kind of avoid short stories. I find it very hard for me mentally to get into them. Um, I just, I, I can't. Like, I like reading a complete story. But these stories tied together quite cohesively. I found I really enjoyed them. I didn't agree with every character, every motivation in the story, which I found was interesting, kind of got me to think about stuff in other ways. Um, 
with some of the stories, I just remember having like either a strong feeling towards a character where I'm like, yes, you see me, and then others where I was like, no, <laughs> no, we, we don't relate. But there's just so many good stories. I'm just trying to see the list because I did have a favorite and I'm just trying to see if I can detect. Yeah, like I can't, I think maybe The Prairie Wife was one of my favorites. Um, or Off the Record. I think one of those two were my favorites. But I can't quite remember because it's been literally, I think last, it was in the summer months. So it was between April and August last year. So I cannot quite remember. I remember walking to work reading it, which I did work for that company like basically my whole year off but you know I remember reading it then then another favorite is when life gives you lululemons by Lauren Weisberger I'm a big fan of the Devil Wears Prada series and I reread the series I believe the year prior to reading this without knowing this was coming out I believe or maybe I did know I can't quite remember my motivation for rereading besides to read the second book which I'd never read before but this book was so delicious and so good and I really want Lauren Weisberger to write a sequel to this one it just had all the feels. I did actually a review on this one, I believe. And oh my gosh. Like, I just love the character of Emily. And it follows her from the movie. If you've watched that, it's Emily Blunt's character. Um, but if you've read the books, it follows her. And kind of what happens to her after she leaves Miranda Priestley's office. And you kind of get an update on what's happening in her life. And you see her friends that are quite different from her. And you get to follow her friends' perspectives. And it's just a delicious, like, summer reread. Just flip through it and it literally flies by. Then on to a bit of a heavier novel, which is Any Man by Amber Tamblyn. And this was kind of a response to the Me Too movement. And it's kind of talking, like this one's kind of a harsher one to read, especially if you don't like to read about very graphic topics. There's a trigger warning for sure. But basically this is about a world where um, there's a sexual predator named Maud, And she, because I didn't do a review on this book, I believe. I want to, but I didn't. But there's a sexual predator named Maud, And she is going after men. So men are the target of getting attacked and mutilated and it's pretty much like kind of because the Me Too movement has both genders speaking out and like both sexes speaking out, I guess. And people are coming forward, but vastly the ones you see, especially in the entertainment world, mostly women are stepping forward. So it's kind of reversing the whole, like, it's more reversing the women coming forward than the men because obviously there's everybody can come forward for something like that because nobody's susceptible. But it's just taking that kind of role where it's like, the men are now being attacked and it's more mainstream for them to come out and say that and it just tackles it in an interesting way because you think because like it's very disturbing and it's like this is disturbing for literally everybody like I feel like that would be a good book to read and like analyze for themes and stuff like that but it really shows like it really also highlights the fact that men can be sexually assaulted just as much as women and I really liked that fact as well because even with the Me Too movement, like, when men started speaking up, it was, like, good to see because I feel like they are almost shamed for speaking up, or not even shamed, but, like, they don't feel as comfortable. So it was, like, a good book just, like, basically saying, you know, like, nobody's susceptible to it. Like, you could be a man or a woman or, like, non-binary, I guess, whatever you um, choose as, like, your pronoun or sex, but, like, any person is susceptible to something horrible to happen to them, which is disgusting and horrible, but it kind of shows that humanity as all of us have to stick together and support the people that are coming forward. Um, and yeah, that's, that's basically what I got from it. And I was like, it was very jarring to read something like that. Something so graphic and open. I, a lot of the books I'd read, if they ever had assault or something, it was usually a man against a woman. So it was very interesting to read from a different perspective. And I hope I'm covering everything with delicate intentions because sometimes I feel like when I talk about those issues, I'm going to offend somebody by the way I phrase things so I really hope I didn't because I don't really want to sound ignorant or anything that's where that comes from more of a fear anyway getting off harsh like harder subjects oh my god 2018 I experienced love in the form of a movie the before trilogy is beautiful masterpiece amazing like Jurassic Park trilogy any Jurassic Park movie but mainly the trilogy the original trilogy um favorites but the before sunrise series that or the before trilogy is you know right up there with it and this is a playbook for the first two and i also read the third script which is only available as an ebook i really want to have it printed because <laughs> i really want it on my shelf but 
these whole movies are all about talking. So the scripts are so rich and you can delve into what they're saying. And the, after I read the script book, I watched it again. I've watched it like so many times since I've seen it. More than some other movies that I absolutely love. Like, whew, so beautiful. So reading the screenplay, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm falling in love again. <laughs> Me experiencing love with Jeepers. So the last, well, the second last book before my favorite, or ultimate favorite, is A Sucky Love Story by Brittany Louise Taylor, Overcoming Unhappily Ever After. And Brittany Louise Taylor is a YouTuber who I've been watching for a few years. And this is about the relationship she went through and chronicled on her YouTube channel and kind of what happened. And she was being very like mysterious because she couldn't legally talk about what happened. And in this book, she was able to divulge what happened and kind of give a warning and talk about the crazy stuff that happened to her. And it was very open, honest and raw. And you really got to see how hard it was keeping her mouth shut because obviously she couldn't, she has a public platform and she couldn't tell all her viewers and couldn't really share with anybody what she was going through. So just to see her be able to open up and inspire people. And I was reading, like looking at her Instagram stories and so many people were like, so happy she wrote up they something had happened to them similar and like they were just so happy that she was speaking her truth and i really liked reading it not only was it obviously interesting from a viewpoint as a viewer watching and wondering what happened but also it was really inspiring the fact that she stood up and like said some harsh things like stuff that happened to her which is obviously not something that like you're gonna brag about because she went through some hard stuff and the fact that she could stand up there and be like start to be an advocate for helping people that might find themselves in the same situation was very inspiring to read about and the last book my favorite of the year was ranger games by ben blom i was addicted to this book i was reading it like i remember i'd go to the gym in the morning and i'd read it right before work and i'd be like scrambling to put on my makeup and be like you know i don't even care if i look like a clown like i want to read this book and it was so interesting and i've never really read a book that kind of dealt with talking about psychopaths i am talking about motivation and what is good and what is bad and does one bad decision make you a bad person automatically or are you a good person who just did a bad thing and just dealing with all these bigger questions that really tapped into my um philosophy side oh <laughs> sorry i just looked at the side and i was like why is one of my funko pops under there that is what fell last week when i was organized my shelf and i didn't even notice i'm so responsible anyway my distraction just amazing like watch my review and i get into it like it's a pretty long review but yeah that's my favorite books of 2018 better late than ever let me know what some of your favorites were and thanks for watching <laughs> bye